five and she was only five. So <laughs> it, I think that the window of age when you read it changes your thoughts mm -hmm. on what she did, how she handled herself. And now because you have a little bit of life experience, you're thinking, okay, well, you could have handled that a little different. But in, at the time, at 18, 19 years old, that's, mm, that's what you know. wisdom. That's interesting. Yes, the more wisdom you have, the different perspective you'll get. Yeah. Yep. I wanted to, I was gonna ask that. Like, what's the difference or what uh, perspective did you think of or how did you feel when you read it at a younger age as opposed to reading it as an adult? You feel so, just like her. Mm -hmm. 18 you feel just like her i'm gonna get out in these mm -hmm. streets too they're not gonna hold me down and this is what i'm used to you know so i gotta keep living and i'm gonna keep living living the life that my dad provided for me and that's what it is but then when you 30 years old 35 years old you got a kid you're like no wait a minute now i can't get myself caught up <laughs> i got to be out <laughs> right i want to get locked up now what's going on now i can't be messing with this dude and that dude you know, right. you think a little bit different. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Have, have anybody else read it when they were younger? Yolanda? I read it, and it was similar to what Crystal said, but for me, it was like, I couldn't believe it because she seemed so naive. It just, mm -hmm. and I, when I remember reading, I'm like, I just don't remember feeling this way. You know, when I first read it, it was like different. But when I read it now, like you said, you're so mature. And then it wasn't so much that she was naive. I've read it as her parents failed her, you know what I'm saying? Because it was like, he only told her, the only thing she knew was, oh, I'm just so beautiful, I don't have to do anything, which was a failure on his own. It's like, oh, you, she still don't know how to survive. And then mm -hmm. her father, you know, he had enough sense to tell Midnight to stay away from the business, I need you to be clean to do this, do this. But he didn't say the same thing to his daughter. You know, to me, you mm -hmm. would have, you should have emphasized the same thing to your daughter. I need you to be clean this, this, because when this happened, this is what I need mm -hmm. you to do. So mm -hmm. to me, and then it also came back to, I don't know, <laughs> maybe I was just having too many feelings in the book, <laughs> but it seemed like the mother was already on drugs. And he yeah. was, because he was a dope dealer, he was able to keep her from off the street. And he yeah. was supplying her habit. But when he got locked up, she had to do whatever she had to, to keep her habit. So it was just mm -hmm. like, I don't know. It was just so much coming to me because it was like, I just can't believe this. And then when I read, his, you know, Sister Soldier was saying, you know, the book that I had got from Thrift Books, it said it had little notes that was asking her about how she felt and the different things and how she was given different perspectives. But it was just like, you know, and I kept looking at the title, Coldest Winter Ever. She wasn't cold in anything that she did. To me, she was successful and she wasn't even trying to help it. Through the whole book, everybody tried to help her. Everybody. Mm -hmm. But um, she refused to accept their help. Like, oh, I know what I'm doing, I'm doing. Until the people that hurt her the most, that's who she was more interested in. And then mm -hmm. on top of that, she didn't even try to help her sister. When everybody, when I say everybody, when I'm talking about Sister Soldier, the young lady who came out there, Rashida, came out there yelling for her. Everybody was trying to help her, but she didn't want to receive that help. It was like... I'm just better than this. I know what I'm doing. It was just like, ah. it was just a shocker for me. <laughs> but you got to remember when you young, can't nobody tell you shit. No. Because <laughs> no. when I was young, you couldn't tell me nothing. I know what I'm doing. <laughs> On top of the fact that her daddy was encouraging the behavior. Exactly. He encouraged mm -hmm. that behavior. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, and in his mind, this is a man's world. You know, mm -hmm. he had a separation. These are my girls. Like, mm -hmm. this is my beauty on the shelf. Okay, mm -hmm. so I don't have to teach you any of this because in my mind, you'll never get involved with any of this. Exactly. I'll always be here. Mm -hmm. So for her, she, she's just living the life that he gave. Now mm -hmm. he's being snatched away. Yeah, I told Midnight to do whatever he needs to do. It, and fortunately, he listened. Mm -hmm. But even in that, she just assumed that Midnight was going to come and scoop her up like a, like, <laughs> like this whole person. And he was like, look, you want to pull yourself together because <laughs> I'm not always going to be here. I can't right. come and dig you out of stuff. I got my own thing going on. Mm -hmm. But that's the way he set those girls up. Yep. Because she yeah, wants to, to depend on him. Uh huh. Yeah, uh -huh. always. But the, the story, it started off, I noticed, with the mother having winter at the age of 14. Mm. So 
That was another uh, thing. <laughs> we already know it's going to be some trouble. You know what I mean? I mean, yeah. um, uh, being a teen parent already comes with a lot. Mm -hmm. um, we already know being a parent by itself is a lot. But when you're a teen parent, it's so many obstacles that you have to overcome. You know what I mean? You don't, first of all, don't know what you're doing. Because there's no rule book to parenting. So when you're young, you're just a baby. You don't know much. So she already had winter at 14 years old. What are you, like a freshman in high school at that age? Maybe. Eighth grade freshman. Maybe, mm -hmm. right. What did you know at eighth grade? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. Not to raise a child. Like women young. And that was another thing, because he had that other young lady pregnant too. You know, yeah, okay. Jose or whatever her name was. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that, that was a whole nother. <laughs> a whole nother. <laughs> <story. laughs> he got a family and now he's going out like how he like Winner's mother young. He went out and found yeah. him the next young thing. It was like there's no stopping me because this is what I knew. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, but that blew me because I really thought Winter's mom was the only woman. I really did. I really no. did. I I don't know. I just thought he was this good, goody good two shoe man. I did because they was like because the way Winter was like she never had no phone calls. Nobody ever came up in her face. Everybody knew my mama was his woman. You know what I mean? So but I'm that's like, the oh, person that he said. That's what he said. Mm -hmm. Don't pull it, okay? Don't yeah. call my house. My family they is just read the book last week. Or <laughs> last month about the same situation. I control and this is what happens. You know, mm -hmm. like, <laughs> how did she not yeah. know he had all those? Um, but I think she did know. I think she did know. Mm -hmm. Santiago was, the way you describe him, he, he mm -hmm. fine. He mm -hmm. fine. Right? Okay? <laughs> he's smooth. He's charismatic. He got money. Women are coming out of the woodworks. She knew. <laughs> She but knew. I don't think she it was just a matter either. of respect. You go to respect. respect. She knew, but she also, I think, was getting high too. So I, that kind of she wasn't getting high in the in the beginning. Yes, she was. She think was always it. getting high. It just exactly. was not in the forefront because she was she didn't have to because he supplied her high. Mm -hmm. She didn't have to go out on the street and trick. Seriously. So at the end, when she was like, Think about it. She got shot and she was like, my mama looks skinny. The reason her mama looks skinny because now I can't it's either food or my high. I can't know. So you think she was smoking crack in the beginning? Yeah, she, absolutely. You don't just go off and smoke crack and get strung out like that if exactly. you hadn't already been on it. Exactly. She, he cleaned her up probably mm -hmm. somewhere around that 14 because there's not a whole lot of background about her family. Her family mm -hmm. probably was nothing. Mm -hmm. So now I'm with Santiago. I got this baby. Mm -hmm. At some point, she had tested out or done something. So mm -hmm. all he did was maintain and keep it leveled out so exactly. she could stay sane. Mm -hmm. When they took him off the jail, now all of a sudden, you you just turned out? No. Mm -hmm. I, I sure thought that. I was like, she had she fell on hard times. She lost the man. Her face no. fucked up. She no. went to the drugs. No. Mm -mm. That's <laughs> what I I swear. Now, now I thought she might have been smoking weed or something like that, but I didn't think she was smoking that. What happened to her face? It got, got shot. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Baby, Leslie, this baby, it's so many twists and turns in this book, baby. It's a whole movie. You oh, yeah, my girl. girl. You girl. wouldn't notice. I wouldn't have noticed, you know, when I read Younger, I didn't think that about it, but it was like instant. I mean, instantaneously, she had already lost all the weight because most people, when they start doing drugs, you don't know they on drugs because mm -hmm. you can't they're tell the functioning, They're functioning drug addicts. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. So when she was like, her mom, I mean, within a couple of days time, her mom had lost all this weight and was dressing all crazy. She had mm -hmm. already noticed something was wrong with her mom when she put on the crazy wig. You know what I'm saying? But she didn't know <laughs> what was going on. Yeah. Yeah, I just didn't know she was doing it at at in the be at the age of you know fourteen. I didn't know she was. I just thought I it know all happened she heard it or whatever happened. But yeah. I know she was on it because she was already. He was just maintaining her. That was his. Um, you know, he felt that was a double actually control method for him because she did. Yeah. And you she can feel about her. Her. 
mm-hmm. her demeanor in the book you can tell mm-hmm. she's so calm everything is okay everything right. is all right and mm-hmm. just you know, go ahead <laughs> yeah she was just leveled out that's all mm-hmm. wow i thought she, she was never, just i thought she, she was just submissive upset. never <laughs> never got upset <laughs> She never she did. But never. I thought she was just being submissive because a lot of women who has a man that puts eyes with them, that's how they are. They say okay to everything. Okay. Mm-hmm. They well, know they claim. About, let's think about a drug dealer's girlfriend. Okay. They still are a little loud. It's some things that you just ain't going to do and I'm not going to put up with. I know you take care of me. You know, you go back to other movies, baby boy. You're not going to just do anything. I'm still going to give you a little lip. This lady was calm and cool as a fan just anything was okay okay Santiago all right <laughs> what <Yeah>. you're hot <laughs> but she did blow up when um because I don't even know if it was that he took her out of the element when she had a fit about the car you know? uh, and she was like I've never seen her after that because she because <laughs> Santiago had stopped coming home as often. He started giving her drugs as often. But she blew up. And then she was like, I can't never see her at the way. This bitch was like, in it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And she's like, take me to the city right now. What the fuck you need to go to the city? You know what I'm yeah. saying? Because she didn't bring the supply there. Yeah. Yeah. She, yeah. Wanted, she wanted that cowboy. She wanted that mm-hmm. bitch. Oh, hell yeah. She was like, we going today. today. Right now. I'm going with you. Today. <laughs> And yeah, that's what she got. also <laughs> the crazy thing too. Well, this is my mature mind thinking. <laughs> you Good. move out there. How do you justify your funds? You know what I'm saying? Without, I don't know. Me, I'm thinking, okay, yeah, I'm dating you. I gotta justify my funds as to my income because I ain't letting you take none of my shit. You know what I'm saying? I gotta have some kind of little small business, something to say this is where my income is coming from. Right. So, that's just my mature mind. <laughs> that's your mature mind. Yeah. yeah. When she left the house and they allowed her to come in the house, she was like, I'm going to go whatever. No, I'm going to get all my stuff because I know they're going to come back and get the stuff. You know what I'm saying? That's just, yeah. no, I'm going to get as much as I can. Go <laughs> by here. Mature mind versus a naive man. You know, we exactly. think much, much different when we're young and naive. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> now, my thing is this. Now, y'all know they said midnight did not, when they, I know I'm moving a little fast, but when they said when they busted him, he didn't have nothing in his house, no evidence, no money, no nothing. Now, how did he know to have a clean house, but then Santiago keeping stuff in the house, keeping all this money, keeping stuff? How, why, why, how, how is that? If you they didn't it. have anybody in the house that was stuck on nothing, Santiago probably had a supply in the house for his wife. Mm-hmm. Thinking, thinking, you know, well, this is just a little bit of something for her. Now, don't get me wrong. He probably had a larger and then he got rid of it. But there has to be something here because this lady might act a fool at any time. I can't get to the city <laughs> at the drop of a dime. I got this. Is, this is why you make sure you do your homework. Who is Santiago? <laughs> He's, the dad. He's the dad of winter. Okay. He's his father. Okay. And yeah. Midnight was somebody who worked for Santiago. But he kept um, Midnight clean because he knew. So his plan was, I'm keep him clean. Mm-hmm. I don't want him into the business, whatever. He gonna do little things, but because in case I went to jail, midnight would have came to bond us out. Yeah. Uh, okay. Whatever the situation was. So that was his whole plan to have, you know, he knew because he, he grew up in the streets, you know, how he took over. But he's like, no, I'm gonna have somebody that's clean. I'm not touching anything, not selling anything so he can come down. He ain't a felon. He did none of the stuff. He can come down Bella's out. Ain't nothing they can say except for, oh, he does this, he does this. So like, he, yeah. So like in the book, it was like, oh, I have me a car detail. So that's what he would say. Oh, my cash come. I saved it up. I got a car detail, blah, blah, blah. But um, he remained clean. He was the clean, how can I say, the silent partner. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Mm-hmm. But but they did say that um, midnight did say that uh, Santiago when like he was he was so distracted by women that that's how he dropped the ball a lot of times. So he was distracted by women, so he don't know who turned him in. He wanted to say the guys, whatever, but it could have been the ladies. They caught him up. I'm taking you. I'm taking your kids. You know what I'm saying? You need to roll on me right now. And most women be like, oh, don't take my baby. I'll tell you everything. You know. But, but dude had explained it. 
But Bullet, Bullet told um, Winter everything, how it all went down. They was already on Santiago anyway because everything started changing after he moved to Long Island. Everything mm, yeah. started changing. So he was like, the guys started snitching on each other because the cops was in it. You know what I mean? Nobody wanted to go to jail. So yeah. They were trying to, you know, they was trying to stay themselves. So stuff started changing once he moved to Long Island. They really, they didn't even like him moving to Long Island like that. So but Long Island was different. He probably was paying the cops in the city. You know, I could pay y'all. Y'all will keep silent. Y'all won't be hounding me. Now you go over to Long Island. That's a different district. But right. also, the True. guy who was paying either died or retired. Mm. Yeah, the, the, so the, 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 the guy, guy Chula, Captain Chula. Yeah. So, <laughs> Captain Chula. so when he, whatever happened, I don't remember, but you know. <laughs> he died or retired, but um, that's what really changed it. He didn't have any control over the people. Right. Mm-hmm. So... You know, it is what it is. Stuff just yeah. started falling apart. It just started falling apart. And when they start locking up guys and stuff like that, all it takes is one person to snitch and the other person to snitch. And then everything just started falling apart. You know what I mean? It's and that's how they were able to raid his house. For me, it goes back to that still happens today. Yeah. He went out to, I would say, a predominantly white area. <laughs> but um, when they see you have nice things, even today, they see a black person with nice things, they automatically think you're a drug dealer. They ain't yep. thinking. And I'm like, come on now, it's 2022. <laughs> we got all kinds of reasons here. But I got to be a drug dealer. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, come on. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm living in a nice house. They automatically think, oh, this is what's going on. Because how they get that? Mm-hmm, how they get that? But in his case, he was a little bit too sloppy. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. um, he was just, he was woman crazy, like what Scott said. It wasn't, he said on one end, but he also was woman crazy. And you know, most of them, like I said, they like they threaten to take your kids. But most of them, I'll be like, take them. I don't want them anyway. But you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> come on, get them. We'll come get them today. Exactly. You know, most of them, you know, even though he's strong, most of them ain't that strong because they trying to do whatever. But I'd be like, oh, I've been waiting for this single life. <laughs> what time can I do? Let's go. <laughs> you better not bring them back to me. <laughs> mm-hmm. but, but you know, a funny, another funny part was when Winna started messing around with the enemy, like. Yo, daddy told you, you don't even know about these streets. You don't even, like, she really thought she was a know. part of the, 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 the game. Girl, <laughs> your daddy is the man. You ain't, you, you know what I'm saying? He protected you, but you don't even know how this stuff worked for real, for exactly. real. Right. Because right. how you end up with having sex with the enemy? <laughs> you don't know nothing. You, That's they, right. they kept trying to tell her, you don't even know half of what you're talking about. Did the, en- did the enemy know that she was the daughter? Hell yeah! Yes. Oh. When you the daughter of a drug dealer, everybody know your ass. Everybody. Yeah. Right. 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 And they know not to mess with you. Cause it's a code. So yeah, he knew. She Absolutely. was always protected. She said when she used to fight girls, one of the girls, they was a group of girls about to fight each other. One of the girls in the group was like, "Oh, that's that's Santiago daughter." They didn't even fight her. They started fighting each other, girl. <laughs> <laughs> But that's the kind of power that you have when you the drug the he was the like the main man list. He was the main man. Yeah. So when you out, when yeah. you're on the street. But once he got locked yeah. up, it's free reign. Baby. Yep. For sure. For sure. It's free reign. It was a whole reality check for her. Yeah. When she didn't have her daddy out there protecting her. She it was a culture shock. It was a culture shock. Yeah, when she exactly. went to that uh that home, that group home, mm-hmm. that's 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 really what shook her. Yes. <laughs> I'm not feeling about you. Yes. I'm not yes. feeling about you. You got mm-hmm. this lock on your luggage like somebody not supposed to touch your stuff. Wow. Go <laughs> for the empty this out. <laughs> <laughs> we, know, we know how to break it open. And they did. And they did. And they did. <laughs> and wow. chased her. And yeah. chased her when she came and thought, oh well, I'm gonna say something. Oh, okay. What you gotta say, boo? <laughs> okay, we're gonna get it. We're gonna get that ass. Don't worry about it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. They took all her money. They took everything back. Everything. Oh my goodness, that was a major culture shock for her. Too. Yeah. I mean, first of all, they all they lived in the project. Yes, yes, indeed, they did. But they father always provided for them. He moved yeah. them out to Long Island, which was the white suburb, 
and they see they had a more of a mansion basically living there. So now mm-hmm. she end up in a group home living with a bunch of girls. All she got is the stuff that's in her bag. The a bunch of girls who ain't never had nothing. Right. See, that's the difference. If you had to move into a group home and these girls are like you, then that's one thing. But these girls right. ain't never had nothing from jump. They savages. They, they yep. savages. Oh, good. Mm-hmm. That's my old girl, Simone, when she was trying to help her, she, um, Simone was one of her friends that was, uh, her, like, her, she, was, she was her booster. Yeah. So she was bringing that stuff into the homes and stuff like that, you know, whatever, whatever went on. She was trying to hustle in the damn group home, girl. Yeah. <laughs> she was hustling. She did hustle in the group home. <laughs> yes. She was selling all kinds of stuff, doing this, whatever you need, I get it for Simone ended up going to jail and she was pregnant yep. while she was boosting too. Yep. She ended up going to jail. Winner ass, she she just turned her back on. She was like, "I ain't giving no fifteen hundred to get out. I need my own money." So mom was like, "Okay, when you when I get out, like your ass is grass. It's basically. on, baby. It's on." <laughs> yes. And do you know when she got out, she caught her ass over there on Brooklyn, some goddamn well, whatever it is. <laughs> caught her ass in that car and beat her ass down and slashed As she her. Should. Face. As slashed she should. her face just like her damn mama face got shot. Her <laughs> both of had a damn gash in their face. <laughs> it's not it's not funny, but it's it's messed up because they had a whole nother type of life. They thought they looks was everything. And it was. It got them a lot and really far in life. But at the end of the day, they end up being the same kind of way with yep. beauty gone. Just like now that. what you got. Now what wow. you got. Because you wow. don't understand loyalty. You don't exactly. understand loyalty. Exactly. If you would have just got that little girl out of jail, you would have been good. You just been good. Like she, just so like she she been, good. she been broke the loyalty. She just wasn't loyal to anybody. Hell okay. no. So before the little girl got in jail, remember she couldn't leave the halfway house. And she had a girl right. that was going to meet Simone. So right. when she can get out of the halfway house, and Simone was like, What about oh girl? Oh, I don't need her now. Nah. So she just cut her totally off. So yeah. now she done, number one. Uh-huh. Yeah. She done cut her loyalty there. You know what I'm saying? Then with Simone, she could have gave the money to her, but she cut her loyalty off for that. So that was that too. You know what I'm saying? When she could have got out of all the situations that she got into mm-hmm. was because of her jacked up loyalty. Even mm-hmm. when when Sister Soldier took her in. She done robbed yep. Sister Soldier. Yes. But you know, Sister Soldier already knew she was shady. She lies all the time. You know, mm-hmm. she probably told her sister, she coming home. You know what I'm saying? I need you to see what's in that box. And when sister seen that bag. She already knew something was up. So the sister... Yep. Even though she, you know, she, how can I say, she shaded the sister all the way. But the sister had enough sense to buy that same coach bag because I'm finna exchange it because I know you dirty. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Yep. And took that money right back. And the sister looked out like, where you going? Oh, I'm not going nowhere. You going somewhere because you got all your bags. You know what I'm saying? All your little stuff. You think you got it. Uh-huh. <laughs> so so let, me ask you, let me ask you all a general question. And it's kind of a sidebar, but I'm attempting to, to, to flow as much as I can since I didn't read the book. But um, what are your thoughts on just listening to you all talk about how she kind of suffered the same fate as her mother and got that same scar, you know, got cut in the face. Um, What are you all thoughts on until an individual, whether it's a female or male, um, become knowledgeable about generational curses that it's very easy for people to fall into that sins of a father, sin of a mother category? What? So <laughs> and that didn't make sense. Well, it's, 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 it's more like you reap what you sow. So San Diego sowed all those seeds of, you know, he didn't care. He stole the um, business from somebody else too. You know what I'm yeah. saying? His mother, I mean her mother, she um she didn't steal anything, but she was, how can I say? avid in the drugs, having sex at a young age, but you know, they wanted to say, oh, winter's gonna be so precious, she's gonna stay a virgin, she's gonna marry a doctor. But here's the thing, what doctor wants a drug dealer's daughter? You know what I'm saying? That, mm-hmm. that was beyond reality. So her yeah. sins, it came right back on her. And then at the end, speaking of the book, so the book ended that way. Sins of the mother <laughs> and father. Really? So I am fluent. <laughs> it, it ended that way because now the 
other daughter, she wasn't the youngest daughter, but the youngest daughter had a hatred towards Winter because um, yeah. the dad treated her like a baby. But she wanted clothes like how Winter had clothes and jewelry. Uh-huh. She didn't want no yeah. cows and stuffed animals. But she grew up, and when they went, and the mother was that dying, for one, Santiago, he cried because he didn't realize he turned that girl out, and he couldn't yeah. even recognize his wife. The daughter, you know, and like she said, oh, he knew how I was feeling, and because the father told her at the end, you're still beautiful, even with that scar. No, she's a very ugly person. Not she, her face matched who she truly are, but oh, she, wow. yeah. <laughs> but the other two daughters how can i say because they were so young they had twins so i guess they had four kids but the other two daughters didn't really grow up grow up with them because they don't remember it so they came into a different world and then midnight yeah yeah he took the daughters he had a plan he took the daughters but he just wanted his family but he knew that you know, he was he was from the streets, but not from the streets. You know, his mother did what she had to do to survive, and he understood that. But even though his mother got taken away from him, he said, I'm going to get my daughter, not my daughter, my sister, and bring my family back. So he came from, it was a family, they were struggling to survive, not because of drugs, but they still had a struggle. Right. Mm-hmm. Right? So he wanted to do better for his family. So like how you said, it's kind of the sins of the father, the seeds you sow. So Santiago sold those wicked seeds, and therefore his family ended it the way the way he sold them. And I mean, it was rotten and <laughs> whatever. That's what came back on his family. And so yeah. it was the same with the young lady, Dolce, whatever her name was. She's probably going to be the same way. Mm. Mm-hmm. So, Lavi, explain your question some more. You say a generational curse about what? So, and and. I often, you know, each and every time I have uh, discussions or I'm speaking with people regarding certain situations or circumstances, in this case, a book, I often examine myself. And the reason that I ask that question is because, of course, you know, coming up, my family was into different things. And I, as I got older and came into wisdom, I started to learn that these are things that need to be broken because they're generational curses. Plus I had the desire to change my lifestyle from what my family was into. But until you can, a person comes into that knowledge of power to say, hey, I see what's going on with my family. I don't want to be like this. What I want to do what I can do to break the curse. That make more sense, Tynesha? Yeah, that make more sense. So you're asking, so what you're saying is, do you think what they were dealing with, do you think it was a generational curse? Like Yes, they because they didn't come, yeah, because they didn't come into the wisdom of knowing, okay, this is not how life is supposed to be, or I don't want to live like this and you know, what can I do to change the course of my life? Oh, okay. That makes sense. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So with the Portia girl, which was uh, Winner's younger sister, she ended up being basically just like Winner. She's going to end up like her. I right. mean, literally just like her. Mm-hmm. Um, the only people that did um, succeed um, having this genera- gener- generational curse was the twins. They're the only ones out the whole family who's not going to grow up like them only because they were um, saved by midnight and you end up adopting them and all that. Mm-hmm. And they are Muslims now. So they don't really, and they were babies when all this stuff was yeah. going on. So they don't have any, pretty much any memory of the drugs and the, the house being raided and just all that stuff. They don't really know they were too young. Yeah. Porsche, the girl Porsche, she was a little, she was like eight years old. I think she was younger than Winter, but she still saw a lot, know a lot. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. she was able to absorb all of that type of um, stuff that was going on in the house. She saw it, she remembered it, and she wanted to be just like Winter, Winter. and of course her mother, because that's what she saw. Oh, but yeah. okay. She didn't have an outlet. There was no, they came from the project, so they came from it. There was never a window where they saw someone living differently. And they right. wondered, so wow. that was okay. their norm. That was yep. their norm. Yep. Exactly. Yep. Yep. 
it all started there. from Ricky. Oh, uh, not Ricky. What's his name? Yeah, Ricky Santiago, right? Yeah. It uh -huh. all started from him and his mom, uh, Miss, the Mrs. Santiago. It started from there, you know. And that's why I say like, uh, that's why I started in the beginning. I was like, they were teen parents. That well, she was. I don't know. He was probably older than her. I'm sure. Uh -huh. But um, it starts there. You know, it, it. That's why I be like, people be mad at these kids on why they doing this, why they doing. This. They doing it because they saw their parents doing it, or some older elder in their family doing it. Like it's not their fault. It really is not. They don't know they, the difference. Yep. They don't know. They, yeah, they don't know anything else. They don't know anything else. Seriously. So I can, if, no, I'm not going to, but I know I have personal issues and personal things that I have dealt with. And like you stated, Leslie, uh, you know, people and family that has been dealing with extracurricular activities, you know what I mean? But when that's all you know, that's all you know, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and it takes one person, all it takes is one person to show you something different and you have to right. have your mind set where you do want to absorb what they're telling you and winter had sister soldier but she did not want the help she had sister soldier and midnight because midnight told her get yourself together he had given her some information on somebody else that she could talk to and that was one of those times when she was boosting and she was like well i gotta get this suit even in that even in him trying to move her over her mindset was still there well i gotta find me something to wear i can't be looking like this i gotta have on chanel i gotta have she just was not ready she wasn't ready but on top of that she didn't want to go to the um, neighborhood because she was like i don't want nobody to know what's going on and he was like no what's going yeah. on Everybody know what's going on. Read a paper because she didn't even pick up a paper. She was like, "This is your family right here. Everybody know you." You know, just like how she lied. The sister soldier was like, "She um, she tricked me." No, you. Was my, mama, my mama, my mama got cancer. Uh huh. Yeah. <laughs> she and I, it's like your mama is out. When they indict people, you know, big drug lords is in the news. You know what I'm it's saying? And they and she she didn't because she she one she didn't go to school <laughs> two <Yeah. laughs> she was like I don't need school what I need school for and it was like it. <clears throat> you need it baby mm -hmm. <laughs> she never went to school never no. her mom make her go either but remember her mother had her at such a young age so I'm pretty they sure something her in was like you don't need to do whatever. I'll take care of you. So that's what she was accustomed to. They grew yeah. up together. And they mm -hmm. felt like they had everything. They didn't need nothing and nobody. Yeah. They had everything. Anything they wanted, they had it. Everything was at this expense. What you want? I guess you anything you want. Whatever it is. Mm -hmm. So when you have that type of lifestyle that you, and you living on top, your, your daddy or your man is running the community, Huh. Ain't nobody <laughs> tell you nothing. Nothing. Period. As long as so, yeah. So when somebody coming to you to try to help you or start you a different way or show you a different lifestyle, you ain't trying to hear it because this is all you know. Even when even when Sister Jones was on the radio, she was like, "What is she talking about? Black these drug dealers messing up the community. Ain't nobody making them sell these drugs. Ain't nobody making the drug the crackheads buy the drugs. <laughs> ain't nobody <laughs> telling them." They be telling them, I don't want to even give it to you because yo, you pregnant or whatever. So they be telling them, don't even come mm -hmm. sell over. They put push. She's thinking that's like the drug dealers <laughs> is the ones that's really the, you know what I'm saying? The real <laughs> men in the community. Like, why somebody talking about them? They trying to help the community. If anything, they trying to help these uh oh, okay, girl. <laughs> Really? I mean, come on now. You know, but that's how people really do feel. Some people feel like that. It's not the drug dealer's fault. Ain't nobody putting no gun up to your head saying, hey, smoke this. You want this? About it. Whatever, whatever. Ain't nobody making them do it. It's a choice. So, Some people do feel like that. I would say it's not their fault, but they don't realize how detrimental they are to the community. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, they did make that decision to get on drugs, but what I mean detrimental to the community is if you're not supplying that product or if you weren't introducing that product to people, you wouldn't be destroying families. So it's more than just that one person. You're destroying families or whatever. Yeah. So 
speaking of generation first, <laughs> my brother, he he's deceased now, but he was on drugs, you know what I'm saying? And he was murdered. But at the same time, his grandson would get murdered because he got in the game. So when I think of generation first, it's just like it's like a repeating of something yeah. going on. So my brother, he was smoking the drugs. My my nephew, <laughs> he caught himself doing the drugs. And then my other nephew, his son. So his son is like a generation of generation. So mm-hmm. my brother, who's deceased, he had two kids. Now the one son, it was like either he was gonna be, how can I say, smoking or drinking. Now yeah. with my brother, okay. I just was saying, I really don't know how he ended up on drugs. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> When I say that, because he went to Wilberforce, you know, he was on the football team, you know what I'm saying? He went to college, he did all that kind of stuff. He was a deacon in church. (laughs) But, you know, my mother had two sets of kids, but what happened, I don't know what happened when he went out there, you know what I'm saying? Or what he encountered, but he ended up on drugs. He ended up having those two kids. So the first one my niece he had prior to all the things and then my i would say my nephew was when he was into drugs he was still obviously saying functioning and then when he ended up getting murdered his my nephew he was young and he was like he was in the environment with his mother my nephew he's now in jail for murder, but he was selling drugs, you know what I'm saying? But now my niece, her son, he started, I guess, wanted to get him the games, we want to be affiliated. He ended up getting killed, you know what I'm saying? So to me, that's to me, that's a generation curse. It's like, even though none of them were, how can I say, immediately looking at all of it, but it was just like in their bloodline. So even though the girls got away from it, it's like something might still pull them back, you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, even if you try to get out of it, you can't because you're, you're just too consumed to it. Like, there's no other way that you know. And, and any other way is not going to work. That's how they feel in their mind. Like, yeah. that's why people sell drugs because they don't have any money and they're trying to get money and they want a quick money. They want they quick, quick money. But if don't nobody want to work for no 40 hours to make a couple of dollars? <laughs> that, 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 yeah, they'll tell you what you make I make that in a day you working how many hours going to a job and you sitting there t- people telling you what to do I can make that in a day but they don't realize your day is 8 hours theirs is 24 so 24 they actually when you add it all up you making less than me you know what I'm saying my 8 hours I get benefits you don't you know what I'm saying? And I don't have to watch my back. <laughs> back too. Okay. The fuck? You know I don't have to watch my damn back every time I go somewhere. And somebody is telling you what to do. Somebody's telling you what to do, sir. Somebody, they get instructions from somebody. And yeah. you know what I'm saying? And even if nobody tells you what to do, you hiding from, because you know what you're doing is wrong. You hiding from the law. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, any time you can go and that's it. You don't have anything, you know what I'm saying? You can get robbed, somebody can rob you, anything can happen, you know what I'm saying? But they don't look at that, they look at it as quick and fast. But to me, yeah. you did a hard hustle. You're working harder than I ever worked. I ain't never worked 24 hours, you know, went yeah, with no sleep. I ain't never had to do that, you know what I'm saying? If I did stay up 24 hours, it's by choice because I wanted, I'm binge watching something I want to do, but I'm in the comfort of my own home and ain't nobody mm-hmm. coming bothering me. But it's so crazy because it's so many of our young men, I'm sure women too, it's mm-hmm. so many of them that want to, to literally sell drugs. Like, that's what they want to do. And they think it's the shit. Like, <laughs> I mean, but I mean, if you have that mindset, you do, I mean, it is cool. Like, you get this, you sell drugs, you get all this. You get, you get money. You get someone to lay your head, you get some to eat, you get some new shoes, you get some new clothes, you get the ladies this. So it's like and you get the ladies, because the ladies want the thugs. The money. Yeah. They want the money. So they it's don't like want to it get is that. the lifestyle. Mm-hmm. You know, hey Tia. Hey. How are you? Okay. Cool. You gonna turn your camera on? I'm trying to figure this out. Oh, okay. <laughs> Tia is new as well, guys. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Tia, that's Crystal um, and Yolanda. 
How do I turn the how do I turn this thing on? Get on it's the helmet. So it might be on the bottom of your phone. What kind of phone you got? I'm on a tablet. Oh, you're on a tablet. <laughs> so look at the zoom. It's like it'll say mute or unmute or share um video. Maybe I need to be pushing something. Oh, okay. Unmute. So wherever you're on mute, it'll be like a little microphone. Oh, well, you see I can that? hear y'all. I just can't see y'all. I mean, I can see y'all and hear y'all, but y'all can't mm -hmm. see me. So how right. do I turn? I'm just trying to turn so y'all can see me. So right by the mute, it should be like a little video where it says it's probably blocked off. I think you turned it on. There you go. There it go. <laughs> We see you now. Uh -huh. Hey, <laughs> hello. Um, yeah, so like I said, she is new. She lives in Peoria. Crystal, I'm not sure if you know Twine from Freedom. I don't know. You know Twine? Yes. That's his sister. Oh, okay. How you doing? Yeah. All right. Yeah. So she's from Peoria. Yolanda, you're in what state? Ohio. Ohio. Okay. <laughs> Crystal is in is here in Illinois with us. Uh -huh. So yeah, I just want to let everybody know where everybody is. Um, so this is our first time. If you want to jump in and say something, you can. We just still discussing the book. Um, you did read the book, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Did you like the book? I did. Okay. All right. So yeah, we were just basically talking about generational curses and about um of course Where did the other young lady go who brought it up. <laughs> oh, she had to leave. She, she, had, she sent me a text or a comment or something that said okay. she had to run. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh baby, she'll be back. Trust and believe. <laughs> she'll be back. Um, you know, you'll see her more often. Um but yeah, we were just basically talking about the book and just talking about um, the di different things about winter and how uh, how it relates to people, like things that you're dealing with in your in your own personal life. So we were just talking about how how we're sharing um, how we know people that has been, basically been through what's actually going on with winter and his and uh, and her dad, how he's selling drugs, how they think that's the right way to go, and how Winter actually had help with Sister Soldier, and she said Midnight as well, but she wasn't trying to hit him because that was the lifestyle that she knew, and that's all she wanted to do. Like, she wasn't trying to absorb or wanting to hear anything positive. She really thought their lifestyle was the way to go, and anybody that was talking anything other than that you was the wrong, like you was in the wrong, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And a lot of people do think that. So honestly, I'm going I'm to be real. I don't even try to lead people away from the drugs. No. I, I don't even try. Fuck it. Keep doing what you're doing. <laughs> and you will see. No, for real, because that when you try to talk to them about, oh, you know, how about you do this? And try, they ain't trying to hear you. They're not trying to hear it. They ain't listening to you, so you're wasting your damn time. Yeah. They ain't trying to live no normal life. They don't want that life. Their life that they're living, they're comfortable with it, and they're going to keep continue doing it until, you know, the shit hit the fan. They may think about what you're saying, and they may not. Because they That's may right. get out and go back to doing the same shit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Get right out of jail and start right back up. So I don't mm -hmm. even talk to people. I probably should, but uh -uh. I don't have nothing to say. <laughs> <laughs> just keep doing what you do. If it works for you, work for you. I know I can't because I I I, I just can't. I can't do it. Like that lifestyle right there. Mm -mm, mm -mm. But in winters, by her being fourteen, you know, in the teenage years, that relates to how things are going on in the world today. Yeah. All these young girls watching yeah. these videos, yeah, with Nicki Minaj, and I like her. But they watch it with, uh, what's the other girl, Cardi B? They yep. think that lifestyle is what's the lifestyle. When they get their money, baby, they want the head down their ass. Think of Cardi B. I was just thinking about, you know, how they, things change or whatever and how people get into the music industry and the music industry, whatever. But Cardi B, and I thought about it, I'm like, she just aired all her business out on, how can I say, what is a, a reality show? And that's what she had to do 
to um get Make into it the industry. Before it was like, oh, if you can sing, come on in and you come and do yeah. this. Now yeah. I'm like, I got to parade myself, act the fool, you know, <laughs> as I, well, I'm going to say ninja nut. <laughs> you, know, <laughs> yeah. you know, but it's like, okay, really? And I said, and this, it ain't just her. If you think about it, all the rest of them act the fool to um, increase day. Even Rihanna, you know, not saying she acted the fool, but her and um, Chris Brown had that little incident. You know, yeah. I'm trying to make myself relevant. Uh, Beyonce and her sister, they fighting in the You know, Jay Z, I'm trying to make myself right. relevant. So make them, so you know, yeah. They might not have a show, but they still act up in public. You know, I come from, you know, even how I raise my son. What happens in my house stays in the house. And for nobody to know, because this is our house. That's right. But. Everybody else ain't like that, you know. <laughs> you know, you tell everybody my business. I want to do everything. No, I ain't doing that. And people, you know, I do have a Facebook account, but they were like, "Oh, you don't ever be on there because I don't want nobody to know my business." I said, "I go on there." Exactly. Oh, maybe I want to attend this reunion. No, <laughs> I said, "Be mm-hmm. on here because I just don't like telling people my business." I said. It's, it's called Facebook, but me be called Facebook. I said because I'm never seen where so many people feel this is my counseling session or do whatever. And speaking of the book, not only was she wild and crazy, she was very sexually active. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Every time I kept reading the book, I just knew she was going to have AIDS, something like that. But she did. <laughs> the worst that happened yeah. was she was pregnant. <laughs> but she probably had some type of um, venereal disease because at the end, she like, never had no past smear. She never, never. Had a, but she had a disease because at the end, Bullet told her, by the way, <laughs> yo, I don't know what he said. It was stinking or whatever. So I said, whatever happened to her, you know, they did give her something. It was like for your infection. She had some type of disease, venereal disease. I don't know what it was, but they never did say. Well, that was because she had got I, the abortion. The day she had got that abortion. She yeah. got the abortion, but she also had an infection. So even though she got the abortion, she they wouldn't say, oh, you got an infection. She had an infection too, but they gave her medicine for her infection. They didn't say what type of infection it was, whether it was, uh-huh. was chlamydia, yeast infection, whatever, they didn't tell her. Oh, I, well, they, I thought they gave an appeal to, to um, prevent an infection. Infection, right. But no. I think her pussy, well, sorry, I think uh-huh. her vagina was smelling because she was bleeding, remember? She had just had an abortion that day. So I think that's maybe why it was fine. Because no, no. That ain't why. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> when you have children, and you go to the hospital, you're, you're bleeding for whatever. It's not, you don't have an infection unless you develop an infection from whatever. They done put something in there, medicine, whatever. But she had already developed an infection. So they gave it to her. So it was like they tested her. It was like, here you go. She never had a pap smear, you know? Oh, okay. All right. But she was doing a lot of sex, having sex a lot throughout this book. Yeah. I mm-hmm. mean, she was. Every man mm-hmm. she met, it was like, damn, she was not having sex, you know? Give it up. Yeah. That's all she knew, though. I mean, that's pretty much all she knew. I'm going to look good. And what they would get me was it, how you homeless and you still shopping though. Right. Every time you go somewhere, you at the fucking store. Are you kidding me? And it's right. not gonna give you a place to live. Exactly. Or she was in Ross, baby. She at the big stores. Right. Yeah. That's what that's, that's what, what I was trying to understand. Buying a dress just for the night. Oh, I'm going. I'm going out to dinner. I got to give me a dress. What? <laughs> you ain't even got no money. And everybody knew it too, and that's the crazy part, how naive she was that mm-hmm. she didn't realize that everybody knew she was homeless. You know what I'm saying? But you out here trying to ball like you got so much. And there's people like that for real. You see them? You know, yes! Like, and they struggling, they driving these big, I ain't hating on them. Whatever your struggle is, yes. you go right here. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> I'm not trying to do that. No, mm-hmm. I can do that. They'll buy one of these high-end tail cars and ain't got nowhere to lay their head. Yeah. Exactly. You got the you got how does that make sense? Know which ain't got no rent. Mm-hmm. And it's so funny because this book was written 20 years ago in 1999, I believe. That's what I was saying. And the <laughs> shit still is going on. It relates to exactly what's going on today. 20 years <laughs> later. 
It's as if she don't know that you can do better. Yes. You do better when you know better. Yes. That's the thing that get me like this shit is happening literally today. Mm -hmm. You know, Um, I want to talk about Midnight a little bit more. Um, Him being um, Santiago's right hand man or whatever, you know, he went through a lot himself. Did y'all remember the letters that he wrote to Sister Soldier? Mm-hmm. He talked about how um, his father was killed, his mother end up um, his his no 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 his father was killed, his sister was molested. He caught the man remember when she was caught with her panties down and all that. Mm-hmm. Um, he ended up shooting a dude in between his eyes or whatever. Then he ended up that's how he ended up going to jail. On top of that, while he was in jail, he ended up getting raped by six men. Yeah. <laughs> like, this is a grown man. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, we don't realize uh, what these men today actually have been been through. Because they don't talk about it, number one. But when I saw that, I was like, oh, my God. Like, he is, he has had a rough childhood to, a, you know what I'm saying, to a certain degree. Like, he going yeah. through his own things. Then his mother ended up going to jail because she mm-hmm. was transporting drugs because somebody mm-hmm. in the jail said, if you don't bring me no drugs, your son, you're you going to see your son in the casket or whatever they said. You know what I mean? So they basically threatened her. Yeah. So now she got to bring in the drugs for the people that work there. You know, and then she ended up dying. He ended up having to adopt his sister. Like, that is trauma in itself. So that really blew my mind about Midnight, you know, and for him to steal, and he was just always different anyway. You know, he was quiet. These girls flung at him even winter. She basically naked in front of his face. Yeah, He's like, yeah, girl, yeah. you put your damn clothes on and go sit down and read a damn book? <laughs> now, I, I, if, if she won, if her face went on the floor, trust and believe it was on the floor that day. <laughs> she was literally in love with midnight but she never had a man turn her down because she figured like that's all they want anyway every man want me you don't want this body yeah. something wrong with you yeah. mm-hmm. and that's how they feel today mm-hmm. yeah they got a banging body hair looking nice cute face oh that's all you want is this that's you all you need. a real man some must you must be gay something wrong with you so even mm-hmm. though her mother pushed that you have to think our media pushed that to the women today too. You know what I'm saying? Like, perfect example. If you look at all the older actors on TV, if they're not, the women has to remain beautiful. The men can be, I can say, just not, they call it distinguished. I call it ugly. But the ladies, you can't be a distinguished female on the television. You have to be perfectly fit, perfectly this, whatever. You know, they might have one or two, but it's not that many. But they got to, Plenty of distinguished men on television, and that's what the media portray. So even it ain't you know how they say, oh, Vogue this, Vogue this. Our books portray it too. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Ebony, they have yeah. jet, they have the jet beauty. We ain't never seen yeah. no plus size woman in the jet beauty. You know what I'm saying? Everybody, mm-hmm. it's like wherever they turn, that's what they see. You know, versus like how that's what they taught or whatever. You might have one or two conscious minds, even like. Speaking of the music industry, all the women, they dress naked. You know what I'm saying? Little Kim, she came out. They was like, oh, you got to dress whatever. She came on the stage like she was a prostitute. But, you know, everything, they just, how can I say? The industry, the music industry, the media, they all push this certain image that beauty is everything. Yes. Because back right about now, if you ain't naked on TV, you ain't gonna, ain't nobody gonna buy your fucking record. <laughs> yeah. You got to be butt naked pretty much on, t- on the TV at this point. Mm-hmm. If you ain't naked, ain't nobody listening to you. And I hate that because back in the day, we talking about the successfully Tysons. Baby, they yeah. won everything. Whitney Houston, although she's breast and peach, she's gone. Wasn't yeah. never naked. Yeah. What's the other like name? The one that sang um Anita Baker. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Back in the day, they were never naked. So it's like, <laughs> how are we gonna get back there? This is is this why we act for the rest of our lives? Like it's only gonna go worse from here. Mm-hmm. 
<laughs> they just gonna be naked. <laughs> and then you gotta start over. <laughs> but that's so messed up. That is so messed up. Like for real, for real. Once you start it, it's it, you can't you can't not you can't, you can't redo it. Mm-hmm. Ain't nobody listening to you for real. Nobody. Because they so distracted by your body. They ain't listening to you. The beat sound good. You look good. Hey, she attend to me. <laughs> Period. You know what I mean? But um, um, you know, uh, let me get back to the book. Um <laughs> when they had the abortion, blah blah blah. Her, she ended up having her face sliced. Um, her boyfriend, when the shit went down, this motherfucker left. Baby, he walked past the car and kept it moving. <laughs> That was her first opportunity to see what disloyalty feels like. Mm-hmm. That, that was the opportunity. That was her lesson. And she still didn't learn. And I kind of felt like it was a setup. I, kinda felt, such- I felt like it was a setup because he knew what happened to her dad. And I mm-hmm. think he might have been a part of what happened to her dad. And with her being out there thinking she all this and that and you know she's a Santiago ain't nobody gonna mess with her and then to put everything in her name it was like she didn't even it didn't even (laughs) register to her that you know everything went in your name you get in the car seat with teddy bears and you ain't got no baby and then she was already fighting with her friends and yet, where did they end up going? Right, right down where they used to live. So I almost think it was like, almost like a setup for, kind of like a setup for her. And basically the girls was going to basically whoop her behind. And he wasn't expecting for the cops to come, but they already they had did. an issue going on. So it was like, well, she just going to, you know, basically she just going to take the fall for everything. Yes. Because matter of fact, when they, was beating, on, going. When they and, was beating on her, Tia, um, he wasn't know what to be feeling. He was like still doing something else. He came back after her face got sad. Nigga, where yeah, was you yeah. at when they had me, when they dragged me right. out of the top? Yeah. That's why I say I almost thought that was a setup that he purposely kind of set her up just to get this fight over with. And it made right you know, right and wasn't expecting for it to go as far as it went. But you know, and them slashing her face, it was kind of like, okay, you know, your mama then got shot in the face, and your mom you, you was all pretty. So now we go, we gonna, you know, do the same. We gonna instead of shoot you, we'll just slice you up in your face. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you yeah. know. Yep. Yep. I mean, and I always felt like if she just would have went to Maryland to find midnight, all that shit wouldn't happen. Because she had an option. Remember, she was on the bus or train or whatever. You know, got a ticket and everything for $25. Yep. And she was going to find midnight. All of a sudden, it was her birthday. She didn't even know it was her birthday because she dealing with so much shit. The boy called, Bully called, was like, hey, it's your birthday. I got, I'm ready to come. Woo, let's hang out. Bam, we can go to Key West, blah, blah, blah. And he knew exactly all the things that she liked. Mm-hmm. So her guard came down. Was down. Mm-hmm. And that's how he was able to slip in. Now that's what the book lost. And it only lost me because here she was on the street. She didn't even have an ID. How do you get on the plane? You know what I'm saying? I was I followed the book all the way up until he was like, oh, I'm gonna do this. That I just lost me right there. <laughs> I mean, I read it to the end, but that was like okay. This is just not real. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But she had no ID. No. She didn't she have didn't anyone. She didn't need one. That's my ID. Right. Back then, you just need some fucking money. They let you do anything. You know how to do it. Ain't nobody asking for no ID. How much money you, you get... got going on on the bus? Go Where ahead. You, you, you do whatever the fuck you want. Where are you right. getting on I mean, the and, and if you pull it out $100 bills, well, ain't nobody gonna really question you. Oh, ain't nobody questioning go. you. Go on, ma'am. Go on, ma'am. That's all you need, baby. They say money talks. 
that <laughs> shit ain't no lie. <laughs> <laughs> Tell your ass somebody some she ain't no ID, girl. <laughs> I know you didn't stop this lady from getting on this bus. Get on the bus. <laughs> no. You know how many you people today? You, you know how many people today still driving and got no fucking driver's license? Amen. Ain't got no damn insurance. <laughs> uh. You can drive, you can drive, but what I'm saying is her getting on that plane, you know what I'm saying? But you can do all kinds of stuff. You can drive, you can travel, you can do whatever. But getting on the plane and he just picked her up, you just, he drove all the way to where she was at. So your flight just happened to be where she was at. That was just, to me, unbelievable. You know? <laughs> yeah. But he was, he, it was supposed to be like her knight in shining armor came and saved her. You know how that I, I that part that I, i'm not I'm, I'm good it's only up until they caught that plane <laughs> but you have to understand midnight has a rep he, he has a reputation too mm-hmm. he has a reputation too so if mm-hmm. i say i'm bringing somebody with me i need a secondary ticket she getting on this plane you're not mm-hmm. about to ask her for no id she getting on the plane <laughs> <laughs> and that's it i got two tickets that's all you really need scan those come on let's go you know the plane yep because let somebody call me and tell me they fly me to Key West. <laughs> fuck an ID and fuck everything else. You hear me? I ain't calling nobody telling them that I'm packing my bag and we gone. Period. No, she didn't take anything with her. She ain't had nothing because he told her to throw all that stuff in the garden. Because <laughs> she don't need it. <laughs> yeah, no, he didn't want her to have um, nothing else, no other nigga bought. Right. That's, That's what it was. That's mm-hmm. what it was. <laughs> no connection. That's exactly what it was. Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah, definitely. But she didn't throw so her in the garbage. But what was crazy to me too is that she was staying in the house and just not going anywhere. Or when she was like, "Oh, I, I did or whatever," and I said, "Maybe she was just young, stupid. All she had to do is say, I went to go get some tampons." Are you frozen? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But she was like, "I didn't go anywhere." It was just like, "Okay, whatever." <laughs> yeah, half us stuck in that damn house. Exactly. Was- With some dogs, left her starving. I know. Huh. And then she just get up and go with him. Then he brought them dogs, remember? And he said, she said he was gone for two nights. When he came home, he came to the house and fed them dogs before he fed her. Exactly. The fuck? Are you crazy? Oh, we would have been fighting. I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. First of all, you ain't gonna leave me in your house with no food. That's number one. <laughs> but you need no. to learn a lesson. You need to learn she a lesson. <laughs> she didn't learn that lesson. She needs to learn that lesson. Yeah, she did not learn that one. She did. She needed that lesson. <laughs> Tia, did you have anything else to share? Oh, I'm good. <laughs> oh, <laughs> um, anybody else have anything to share? I do think though, what she was rather to me dumb because first off, you went and picked out this apartment, you decorated this apartment, but then you stuck inside. You no can't problem. go nowhere. You can't do nothing. You, 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 and you was okay with it. Like, <laughs> okay, well, he's provided me everything. I can't go nowhere. So you got to sit up in the house and look at your four walls and go stir crazy. <laughs> but the moment, but then to show you how young you are, the moment you walk out the door, you couldn't even come up with a good ladder where you went. It was just you just really didn't know what to say. You were shocked you got out the door. And you were just like so shocked you got out. You couldn't even come up with a good ladder where you even went to. You, you <laughs> all you could say was nowhere, please. <laughs> but here's the thing to me. Yes. She knew, well, she lied and said she was with some guy. You know what I'm saying? And when she found out she was pregnant, she should have told him that it was the ex because she was with some guy. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> he, that's a, that was the impression that he had. You know, you finna do whatever. But she was like, oh, no. I'm like, okay. I don't know why she just didn't tell him I was pregnant, but she probably thought he was going to leave her. But, I mean, you didn't even tell him. She like, knew he just... wasn't his baby. <laughs> she was um, one of the guys' baby that she messed around with, but she just didn't know who baby it was. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. Oh, remember that time when she thought she was having sex with GS? Ended up being the other dude. Oh, yeah, oh the, dog, the, the bodyguard to the house. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh, MG, 
he was like, he put himself in that situation. Yes, he was like, baby, you looking for GS? Oh, you need to be calling me because baby, I was the one that that was me. You said me, baby. <laughs> baby. Oh my god, I could not believe that shit. I was like. <gasps> <laughs> I go that young and naive again. <laughs> you don't even know who you having sex with. Mm. I mean, the light nope. never came on. Never. So she just, she never knew. And had to do all that shit. Remember they was doing it? They had a whole bunch of women up there. They was like, okay, who mm -hmm. got this? Who got that? Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and you still don't even get the main man. Mm -mm. Yep. You were never gonna get him because they play some game called Snitch or Switch. I mean, Switch. Oh, that's what the game was. Switch. They switched up at night. Well, I'm I think like, DS that's had dirty. He didn't have anything to do with it. She just was so young and naive. She thought that was going on. So they did film the video. So like the whoever the producer came in was like, "No, what you doing here? You got to get out of here." She down there cooking like <laughs> I'm the new main no. chick. <laughs> but you know they filmed the video with the girls or whatever and then at the night he probably bounced and did whatever because I think he was interested in Sister Soldier but um, she just assumed that oh no because I'm so pretty my body this yep. blah 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 and you know like when he came to her and he like, like get out of my face what the fuck you want you want me to fuck you out fuck you whatever but you know he just, she just assumed that because Sister Soldier wasn't like out there, whatever, nobody would find her interesting. Mm -hmm. The same way with her love for Midnight. Midnight was in love with Sister Soldier, but Sister Soldier, yeah. oh no, I'm not doing that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, but I'm <laughs> she like, how can somebody turn? Because everybody she think was the greatest was the greatest, you know. But GS had more sense than she thought because when Bullet was like, he knew the guy was crazy. So just like uh, <laughs> people with their drug and girlfriend, they know they're crazy. I ain't finna get involved with that. <laughs> when she was like, you know her, he was like, nope. <laughs> like, keep it pushing. She talked about, I don't know why he covering for me. Why he was covering for um, her. He wasn't covering for you, too. He was covering for himself. He knew he was crazy. <laughs> yeah, definitely. You Like they say, you want you want to live. And it's when you on the streets, mm -hmm. <laughs> Because, baby, they don't talk. They come in to kill, okay? Mm -hmm. They ain't trying to negotiate. They ain't trying to have no meeting. They ain't trying to have no discussion. Look, this what it is. And that's why street is different. Like, that street life is totally different. They yeah. not trying to talk you out of nothing. They just come to kill you, period. They ain't putting up no dukes. They ain't trying to, they ain't trying to fight. They ain't trying to match, box, match. They ain't doing none of that. First of all, ain't no talking. Period. Because what are we talking about? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You know what I mean? That's why I don't, you in the streets, I can't, I can't mess with you because I just can't. <laughs> but Sister Soldier knew that. But here goes another That's why she messed with Midnight. She said, You in the streets, dude. So, like how they shot her mother, that bullet ain't got no name. I just want to get at Santiago. So I don't care who it hit, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And that's uh, something you got to deal with. But you but would you think that. that if you saw your mama got shot in the face, <laughs> that you would fucking walk away from this lifestyle. That wasn't enough. <laughs> she almost died. Her face is twisted and disfigured forever. That ain't yeah. enough. What the hell you need? What, like, but that's the real reality. It ain't enough for people. They see people steady down and, and it ain't enough. They don't want to get out of the game. Yeah. Because it's just that good or it's, I, I don't know, it's the money. It, it's, it's the money. That's what it is. It's the money and it's the lifestyle. If I see my mama face this figure and get shot in the face, <laughs> I'm baby, done. let me tell you something. Ain't hey, nan, 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 another drug dealer coming up <laughs> in my face talking nothing, okay? I don't care how many wads you got. I don't care what kind of car you ride. You better get the uh, out of my face. 
<laughs> but but it but it don't it don't register for some people, you know. Mm-hmm. And it's so sad because it's a lot of people and a lot of young girls that feel exactly the way winter feel, and their mindset is literally just like that. Yeah, that's the sad truth that we have to deal with, you know. Um, but yeah, it, this this book was just it was it it, it had a, it had a lot of emotions. Because you was mad, you was crying, you was sad, you was happy. You know, it was just, it was just a lot, you know. Um, the happy part was when, um, at the end, I will say, when the kids all came to the mother's funeral, I was mm-hmm. really happy to see they all, you know, that they all became, came together back again as a family. Um, although things were different, you know, they didn't really know each other. Everybody was distant, but they all did come to their mother's funeral and was able to reunite. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so all right, that was enough about this book, and I definitely <laughs> like this book. Um, I'm gonna send Crystal and Tia the new um book list. So, you all, how we do it is um, you know what, Yolanda, you want to tell them how we do it? Oh, sure, <laughs> you pick a number from one through 100, and you also send the book selection that you would like to read for next month. So whoever is closer to the previous, um, how can I say, winner's number, um, you get to, that's the book that we select. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, so I'm gonna send this to you right now. Give me one second. And you will send it to her individually, not to the group text. Okay. Yeah. Your selection. Yep. Just text it to my phone. And um, yeah. I don't know where I came up with the idea. It just happened one day and we just stuck with it and it works. It definitely works. It's kind of like a lottery pick, you know. Um, but yeah, it, it works. So I'm happy about that. Now, are all these books we can get like from the library? Because this one I had the hardest time finding. Majority of the times, yeah, you can get it from the library. I, I always say try the library first. Yeah, the library, but I use thriftbooks.com and um, they will mail you the book. But it's mm-hmm. um, the book is like, so the book I got, I think I might have paid $4 for the book. Mm-hmm. Yes, um, Tia, and I know that um, this book was not in audio. Someone told me that, and uh, I don't really do Audible, but someone told me that it wasn't in Audible. So you later, like in the next, maybe the whatever book we read next month, um, you can probably possibly do that. I don't know how you feel about that. Do you like Audible or do you like actually reading a book? Mm, I like more reading them. But oh. I did. I did find the book, and I could get it in in the audible version. On, but I had to do it all online. Really? So I, I thought actually, they didn't have this book in Audible. I actually read. I actually read the book online through Open Library. Oh. And they had an audible that you could push to audible and just listen to the book too. Really? Now the okay. only thing with the only thing with that is you can only rent the book an hour at a time. Mm, oh. So I literally read this book in about five days. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, because okay. I, yeah, I read this about five days. Okay. Yeah. Um, say, I always, is, this a, is this list of books that you guys have already read? Mm-mm. I'll take every book we read. I'll take it off. Okay. Oh. Is this the list you want us to pick from? Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. <laughs> Yeah, just text me whatever book you want to read and text me a number, one to a hundred. Um, yeah, but um, I always go to the library first because at first I was like, I was going to buy the books too. And the first book we read was called Children of Blood and Bones. It was about 500 pages. And I went, that they didn't, so good. I, you, you read it? Uh-huh. They coming out with a movie too on it. They working on it. But um. Uh-huh. I can't wait. But uh, we read that book. That was the first book we read. And uh, I bought it, you know. And then I was like, well, shit, if we finna be doing this every month, hell, I can't be buying these damn books. 
I'm like, books all over my damn house. So I said, oh, the library. The library, they got books. And that's how I, when I do, when new people do come, I always encourage them, please try the library. Just to save money is why I do it. Some people, everybody do different things. Like Yolanda, she go to uh, thrift books. I have been to thrift books. And you said three book, thrift books, right, Yolanda? That's what that's you said? Right. Thrift okay. books. Right. Yeah. You're right. Um, I, I have a half price books. That's another place you can go to. It's just like thrift books. Um, mm -hmm. I go there, but I always try the library first. A lot of girls are on Amazon. They got that reading thing or whatever on Amazon. The mm -hmm. A lot of people already got that because they order through Amazon already. So they just get the reading thing or whatever. So everybody do different stuff, but I always encourage the library and I always encourage Audible too because a lot of people, like I say, don't have time to sit and read because it does take a lot of, out of your time and out your day and stuff. So um, pe the girls have told me that, oh, Audible is great, you know, because you can listen to it while you drive it, while you're at work, if you're cleaning. Some of their asses have uh, listened to the Audible the day before the damn meeting. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't care. I, it don't bother me. Some continue, you know, they finish up the morning of whatever it takes. I just encourage just to read the book. I don't care how you do it, whatever, it don't matter. Um, but yeah, library will definitely save you some money. Um, and they said they have the Audible at the library too, which is free. So I think that's great. And plus you get the country, you, you, you actually go into the library. Like most people don't even go to the library no more. Like I think that's, mm -hmm. That's a good thing, like, you know, just to have a library card and actually use it, utilize it, <laughs> you know, you, you will be surprised a lot of people that do not go to the library, you know, so, um, yeah. So I thought this would be something, you know, the book club, somebody told me we should start it. I was like, mm, no, because, you know, I, I, I don't like to be over shit, okay? <laughs> so I said no several times, and I was like, you know what? Let me go and do this. And we've been doing it and got it cracking. And we've been in for doing it for three years now, going on four. So um, I'm always interested in ideas. Tia, you weren't listening because you weren't here. I mean, you weren't listening, but you wasn't here earlier. We talked about going on YouTube with this, um, with the book club. Um, only the Zooms, though. And um, the girl that was on before you, she gave me the idea of wanting to do a podcast. So that's going to be in the works as well. So yeah, it's what we do. Um, we was doing Zoom for, of course we just started doing Zoom since the pandemic, but um, I thought about doing six months on and six months off because I was like, I'm not giving up my Zoom account. Like this shit can work. Like we're gonna make this work. <laughs> so I was like, you know what? When it get cold, hell, nobody wanna go outside. You know, in the winter time, when the winter comes, snowing, nobody wanna go outside. So I was like, you know what? We'll do six months on. So I get my money worth, and I don't feel like they just robbing me. Okay. So I was like, we'll do six months um on Zoom, and then six months we'll go out and do whatever. Um. Uh, Yolanda was saying another idea today about how we can travel, which I like. Um, I don't know if you heard about that, Chris. Did you hear her say that? Uh huh. Okay, she was talking about <laughs> traveling, like how this book was set in New York, you know, just do it maybe like an annual trip or wherever the book is setting at, you know, the setting of the book. We go there and do like a um, you know, just look at things or whatever, so we can kind of relate to the book or be like, oh, okay, we went here. Like how in the book of folders, whenever, like she said, the brown stone uh, housing or whatever, you know, mm -hmm. go check it out, you know, take pictures or whatever, and just kind of dive more into the book, you know, get a more a picture feel of what really was happening and relate even more to the book, actually be in the um actual location where the book was um talk, you know was uh describing or whatever you know actually see what they were talking about I thought that was good like I told you before I thought about doing trips out of town but then I'm like I didn't I wasn't gonna relate it to the book though <laughs> <laughs> I was just doing like a little girl's thing, you know. So it would be a girl's thing too, but it's still you're right. getting involved with the culture, you know, so that way, so people can truly see that, oh yeah, this book was so descriptive that I was like, I was always there, but now I'm actually here. I still feel yes. like 
what yeah. is going on. Even if I just got on the trip of the subway or, you know, how she got on the train, we just wrote it, whatever. You can see what she did. Yes. And, mm -hmm. and that's what I like. She wanted to tie the location into the book. So I thought that was a brilliant idea today. I was like, oh, wow. So, of course, I'm always taking notes. I wrote it down. I got everything down. Um, so I'm always open to everybody's ideas. If you have places for us to go, like we do a lot of restaurants and stuff like that. Um, so I'm always open to ideas. Um, by the way, Tia, we will go. We going to come to Peoria one day too. come hang out. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That number up, that ain't number up the street around the corner. So we can definitely <laughs> get to Peoria. Because I know it's maybe hard for you to come to us, you know, but we'll definitely come down there and check you out too. So um yeah, it'll be wonderful. Definitely. Tia, have you figured out a book yet? Because we're gonna do it now. Oh, oh you're doing it now. You're doing too much. <laughs> Girl, you should have a list by heart by now. Uh, no, no, no. No, nah, it's too many books. It's too many books. I guess I'm going to add Leslie in. Even though she didn't read, she did join. So I'm going to give her the list as well. Um. Okay, mine would be... You You keep uh, it... Uh, text it to me. Don't, don't put it out loud. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah. Did I text that to you last time? Oh. Here you go. <laughs> All right, let me send it to you. Yeah. Because what I do is, um, who picked this book? Um, coldest one ever. Casey. Picked this book Casey, Casey picked this book. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> so what? So what will happen? She's in. She's watching some. Some. What is the? Wherever the Bears is playing, that's where she's at. I, I don't know I'm where they're in Dallas. Right. That's where she's at. Yeah, she's at on the uh, what's the outside thing you call it? The tailgate. Mm -hmm. That's where she at. So, um, so what happens is she'll give me her number, whatever number she pick, who's ever closest to her number, that's who wins the book for the next month. And then she won't be able to pick this month because she are you know she's yeah, already. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's how it go. That is the, what we do. So I got to get her number from her and then I put everybody together. Um, hang on a second. Um, oh, dang, I forgot that. Right? And Yolanda, what is it that you do again? Don't, aren't you like into um, computers and stuff like that? <laughs> no. No. <laughs> Oh, no. Nope. Nope. <laughs> what you no. do? I work at the post office. <laughs> Girl, no, you don't. Yes, I do. I work at the post office. I'm a manager of the post office, but um, uh -huh. I, <laughs> I work in inside. Huh? I thought you did something with computers, technology. No. Never. <laughs> no. <laughs> If you see me on a computer, I was doing my schoolwork. <laughs> but no. <laughs> mm -mm. No, I thought you I thought she was dealing with someone with computers because I was gonna tell you that maybe I can have a backup. Um, even though um tap the husband, he he is a um engineer. Mm -hmm. somebody. So that's why I'm going to have him help me and he's going to be the engineer for our book club because mm -hmm. I can I have access to him. So Tabitha didn't make it today because today is her brother's birthday. Mm. So they having brunch that's and all that today. Yeah. So um I thought he would be a good person because you know I can always get to them and he it ain't like I gotta uh you know you know how some people be like give me your card and I gotta run around and try to find somebody to do something. He's very accessible. So I can always throw off ideas or he can always help us in any way. Um, and he has his own business as well. I'm going to put that out there. He has his own business, um, computer computer business. He does um, something. I forgot what he's, it's called Good Memory. Good Memory or something is his business. So um, he's always, uh, he's very, uh, you know, uh, what do you call it? He's very technical. He even has a, um, he goes out and help the older people in the homes, like old people in nursing homes. He showed them how to use a computer as well, too. So he does that as well. Uh -huh. 
So yeah, and he's young. So he's like what forty something maybe, early forties, mid forties. So uh, yeah, he he'll be definitely good for us. Um, let me see if I got everybody's information. Let me see. Yeah. Y'all know, um, what's the movie coming out? Wakanda's coming out. Are y'all going to see that? Absolutely. Yeah, I'm definitely going to. We can try going out as a group again. If, you know, I'll see how everybody feel about that. We can try that one more time. Because um, we've never done it before. Last time was the first time when we went to go see The Woman King. That was really nice. But I'm going to try doing Wakanda. And y'all know um, Michelle Obama is coming here. I'm going to probably get my ticket next month to go see her. It's kind of costly, so I don't really expect everybody to show up or whoever can, can, or whatever. But it is pricey. It's like $200 is like the cheapest of the But I know Crystal told me she went the last time she came for her yep. other book. She saw her. Um, did you do the meet and greet or you actually went to the Oprah thing at United Center? I went to the United Center. I didn't do the meet and greet. Oh, really? Okay, because somebody else told me they did the, she was signing books somewhere for that uh -huh. for first book and they saw her and met her. Yeah, so I wasn't into reading at that time. Ooh. I had put it, I wasn't into books at that time. Like I had put it to the side. I was doing other stuff. Okay. But um, now that I'm back into books or whatever, I'm definitely always trying to go to a book tour, a book signing, you know, yes. things of that sort. So, yeah. And, and, and if you ever um, hear of anything, please let me know so we can always send it to the group. Or you can just text it to the group like you've done before. So, yeah, that'll be helpful. Because when Gabrielle Uni came, I didn't know about mm -hmm. it. Somebody texted me and was like, hey, Gabrielle coming. I'm like, okay, I got on it, saw it on Instagram and sent the information out, you know, got on it and saw um, we was able to attend that. Um, we went to Will Smith book tour. Uh, who else? Uh, Portia. Portia from Real Housewives of Atlanta came here to Chicago. Um, actually, she was in Schaumburg at the bookstore, Barbara's bookstore. We went to see, do her signing. So mm -hmm. it's been a couple of things we've done. Yeah, we always trying to get out there and do some things. All right. Uh, once I once I get everybody's information, then I will definitely put it out in the group. Um, but yeah, that's the end of it. Anybody else have anything to share today? Anything? It don't have to be about a book, just anybody want to share anything. <laughs> <laughs> no no okay all right just ask me because i know people have things they want to talk about all the time so i always have to ask all right then ladies well i will send the information out once i get everything together and tally up the numbers and all that and i will see you all next month at one o'clock the book club the book meeting probably going to be let me see what day the 27th no. Um, Thanksgiving is what the 28th what is it um, the 24th so it'll be after Thanksgiving which is good everybody been to eight and got full so <laughs> y'all read up in that time on holiday so yeah we so put that on your calendar November 27th November 27th one o'clock Tia I'm getting <laughs> Now, if it's a work, we gotta be late. I can't make no guarantee. Mm -hmm. you, you don't have to be here at one o'clock on the dot. Just you know, at one o'clock, you said. Mm hmm And plus, I'll send out a reminder and all that stuff as well too. All right. Okay, dear ladies, I will see you guys. You all have a wonderful Sunday and have a wonderful rest of the week. You all right, you do. And thank you all for joining today. Mm -hmm. All right, bye. Bye. bye.